Hi guys, how's it going? This is a bit more about what happened when we were down in Chile. After we left Santiago, we flew into Calama, which is in the Atacama Desert. We hired a car and drove out to San Pedro de Atacama, about an hour away. I hadn't realized how high up the desert was, but it certainly was a place where you had to be a little bit careful about how quickly you were moving around. From being a child at school, I remembered reading in my paces about the Atacama Desert and how it was the driest desert in the world. But back then when I was looking at it, it was kind of my pre-internet days. So aside from the few small pictures I had in those books, it was difficult for me to get a lot more information very easily about it. It, but it's always stayed in my mind as a place that sounded really interesting. So I was so excited to have the opportunity to get there. And so we stepped out for my first real desert experience. Come on, man. We arrived into San Pedro de Atacama. It was dark. It was absolutely freezing cold. But we were booked to stay in this really beautiful glamp site. We had our own yurt. If you've ever thought about going, two things. Number one, you should definitely go to the Atacama Desert. And number two, you should definitely try and stay in the Atacama Glamp site. Thankfully, the Glamp site had heaters, electric blankets, and warmish showers, although it was a terrifying walk to get there. See, during the day in winter, the Atacama Desert will go up to about 20 to 22 degrees, but at night, it drops to about minus two or three. The town of San Pedro itself is really cool. It's a bit like a Wild West frontier town. You've got sandy streets, a kind of desert chic aesthetic going on throughout the whole place, and you'd never be surprised to see some tumbleweed just randomly blowing across the road. Normally when we go traveling, we'll look at TripAdvisor and try and spot out what's the best restaurant to go to in an area that we can afford and do things that way. But as we were in the desert, we were feeling a bit adventurous. So we drove down and parked outside a really cool looking place in the town center. But when we walked in, we weren't prepared for just how great this was going to be. If you're a big Star Wars fan like we are, then you'll of course know the Mos Eisley Cantina. And that was exactly what this place was like. <laughs> They even had the live music band swinging along at the front. The place had the same feel. It was just wonderful. We went back there a couple of times during our stay because it was just such a great place to be. When we got up, we obviously went driving around the desert just to get our bearings. And I've never seen anywhere like it before. It's a stark, volcanic, broken, wasteland which is as inhospitable to human life as it is beautiful we had to be careful with time because it's possible to stop on just every corner of the road because you'll always see another site that you could just be photographing for hours we literally had to discipline ourselves as to how many photos we could take because otherwise we never would have got anywhere one of the first things we did was go and visit the Giza's del Tatio which are about 4,300 meters above sea level obviously that's the hot water kind not east end wannabe gangsters the Giza's are great they're nice to see. Some people get up at 4.30 a.m. to go and see them at sunrise. I don't think that's really necessary. But what is much cooler is the fact that they have a geothermally heated pool there. The water comes out from the geysers and fills this little lake. So even though you're at 4,300 meters elevation in the freezing cold, you can settle into an absolutely gorgeous hot spa. My biggest tip, if you're gonna go, take your swimming trunks, take a towel, but definitely take a robe as well because you will freeze to death otherwise. The water temperature is absolutely wonderful. It's not cold at all. It's just an absolutely glorious experience. While we were in the geothermal pool, there were quite a number of other tourists who'd gone to visit the geezers but didn't know about the pool. So they obviously hadn't brought any swimming stuff with them, but they all walked over and the look of envy on their faces just made the experience so much better. All the wildlife we saw in the desert, there is wildlife, believe it or not, in the desert and it took our breath away. I'll show you some more later on in the video, but this is the first we saw. Don't turn around. What? Where do you come from? Where do you come from? Canis lupus. Vulpus vulpus. I don't think he speaks English or Latin. I'm asking if he thinks we're in for a hard winter. He doesn't seem to know. What a beautiful creature. Wish him luck, boys. Good luck, Good luck out there.
we actually saw a couple of these. It's the Patagonian fox or the South American gray fox, like Calapex griseus. The Atacama Desert is the driest desert in the world with average rainfall of just over half an inch per year. But bizarrely, there are still some nice bodies of water to be found around there. As we drove along, we also saw a load of fake sheep. The desert has llamas, alpacas, and vicuñas. And for those of you who are wondering about how you can tell the difference between a llama, an alpaca, and a vicuña, I'd say alpaca meat tastes slightly better. I'm just kidding. Kind of. Although I did actually eat both llama and alpaca while we were out there. But actually, llamas have more curved ears and a longer nose. Alpacas are the normal ones. And Vicuña are the smallest of the three. But as we continued our drive through the desert back to San Pedro, we came across the most majestic fake sheep I'd ever seen. This creature was beautiful and he knew it. On the next day in the Atacama, we took another drive through the desert, this time to go and see some altiplanic lakes. What's an altiplanic lake, I hear you ask? That's another fantastic question. I didn't know, so I googled it. Turns out it's not that complicated. As the name sounds, alti means high, Planic means plain, so it's essentially a lake that's high up somewhere, a bit like our tarns in the Lake District. The lakes themselves are incredible and really worth visiting. The drive, the drive is just unbelievable. And as you go around, you'll see that the high mountainous background is not just mountainous, it's volcanic, and a number of them are active. As we passed one, I thought I could see some yellow smoke rising up from the top, and a bit of a zoom in with the good camera showed us the sulfur being released from the volcano. We got home, we ate some good food, we slept in our yurt, and we woke up and went out again the next day, this time to the Salar de Atacama. Salar is a salt flat. These have got their name primarily from the fact that they're extraordinarily flat, but also because they're covered in salt. It's a world that looks bleached white and blue. We walked out onto the salt flats and I really was not ready for what we saw next. There was a flock of flamingos standing in these salt pools and dancing with one another in mating rituals. Occasionally another one would fly in or out. Like everyone else there, we stood for hours mesmerized by them. It felt like a magical experience to go somewhere so inhospitable, so arid, and to see these beautiful and bizarre creatures dancing in this place at the end of the world. The flamingos, of course, get their pink color from the tiny shrimp that they eat in the lakes. The hydrology of the area, as in how the water and the salt get there, is actually a really interesting topic. But in my research, I found three contradictory articles on it. And as such, I'm not sure which is the most reliable. After we'd had enough of flamingos, I'm just kidding, you'll never get enough of the flamingos. After we'd been there for an awkwardly long time, we headed back to watch the sunset across the Valle de la Luna, or Valley of the Moon. It's called this because of the similarities people think it has to the moon surface. And as we sat and watched, we couldn't help but agree with them. Not that we've been to the moon, but we did watch Wallace and Gromit's Grand Day Out, so that has to count for something. Wensleydale. Two more things I didn't know about Chile when we were going there. The first was that we were flying into a total eclipse. Chile is known for having some of the clearest skies in the world, and there's no better place to watch a total eclipse from. The other thing I didn't know was that when you're in the Atacama Desert, you can see the Milky Way with the naked eye. To protect the visibility, there are strict controls about light pollution, and so we'd spend long periods outside at night, lying down, looking at the Milky Way. We also got a chance to look through some telescopes and take some shaky video with my camera. On our last day, we decided to take a whistle-stop tour to the Valle de Marte, which means Valley of Mars. Confusingly, when the Spanish settlers were trying to communicate this place to each other, although it was originally called the Valle de Marte, it was mistranscribed occasionally as the Valle de la Muerte, so instead of the Valley of Mars, it became the Valley of Death. Personally, I think the Valley of Death is a big claim for it, but if we stick with Valley of Mars, I think the name's a lot stronger. Unfortunately, our time was quite limited and we had to head off. We were sad to fly out, but so glad to have gone. All in all, we spent four nights in the Atacama Desert. Prices here are expensive, but the location is so starkly different to anything else you've probably seen on the face of the planet that it's difficult to encapsulate in words. So I'd say a short trip of a few days is a good trade-off. While we were traveling around, I was really expecting to take a day every now and and then to edit some videos together. So our initial purpose in making these videos was to convince our parents we were still alive while we were traveling through South America, often in some quite sketchy places. The problem was when we hit Chile, Peru, and Colombia, we were seeing so much interesting stuff every day that it just left me no time to hide myself away and record and edit. That's why they're so late. If you like this video, do the right thing, click like down there, and help save the flamingos. And the next video will be from Peru. Bye guys.